You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 12th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we peer into the future and tell people things they don't want to hear. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey. I'm going to turn your, your microphone down just a little bit because you're coming through real loud and clear. Oh, okay. I think maybe it's because I... I I I had somebody draw blood today, and all my oh, senses, yeah. <laughs> all my senses are heightened. Can I just tell you what the interaction was like very quickly? Sure. They have a wonderful. Uh, I just I have a labs done because I have a little glitch with my thyroid, and they're testing to make sure they have the right dosage. It's nothing to worry about. But you you pull up and you stick your arm out the window, and some very nice um, nurse or nurses or nurse practitioners come out with a tray, and they take your blood and wrap you up and say, oh, are you okay to drive? And that's that. It's all very efficient. And the woman who stuck me today was telling me about how, you know, her, her teenage daughter uh, just turned 15 and is now going to uh, learn how to drive in her new car. Oh Lord. And uh, cause I asked, how's your day going? Well, pretty good. My daughter just didn't. And I said, well, funny story. <laughs> 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 and I related uh, we have three teenagers living at home. One is coming up on her 18th birthday. One is 16. They all have access to cars and they all want their freedom. Um, During and, a pandemic when we're said, trying to keep them and safe. I said, I said, so stick me, lady. Stick me. I could <laughs> use the relief. I could use a little vacation from that. But then we, we dialed it back. I said, and they're all under one roof and they're all healthy and they're all relatively happy. And we are extraordinarily blessed. Uh, because all of those things are true. And she said, yeah, I know that's true. So we had a, a nice note, but, uh, uh, but it has been a tough week for me as a mother, yeah. I will say, yeah, I, well. just dealing with teenage shit, you know, just, and, and junior Deuce 21, right. He's, he's the least of my troubles right now. He well, has in various years been more trouble than he is now let me put it that way as a mother and a patriot you forgot as a mother and a patriot most important part of that yeah it's just seriously just stuff it's just stuff and and people that don't know that was uh in liz cheney's uh senate she pulled out of the senate race in wyoming because she couldn't win Uh and she went won her house seat instead and so she's she's being she just keeps on being Liz Cheney. That's the problem. But she she wrote in her letter as a mother and a patriot. Yeah. And so if you're a new to this podcast, you need to know that as a mother and a patriot <laughs> comes up frequently as I'm talking about being a parent of three children. It does. But but youngest child, I feel for her because she got her driver's license in February. You did. And. Immediately, you know, within three weeks, Boom. the shutdown Boom. happened. And during a time when she should be driving everywhere and seeing all her friends and driving them to fast food and going to drive in movies and going to movies and every and doing everything. And hanging out by the way, going on sleepovers and all those, yeah. all those things yeah. that you just are just totally legitimately fair. That's what summer is when you're that age. Right, um, right. They've all been taken away um, yeah. by, you know, and each of us get to play the designated asshole on any given day. Honestly, uh, yeah. But, and and, it, and we they're not unreasonable young people. They're very reasonable young people. We have essentially a an Algonquin roundtable going here 24-7 about race relations and about COVID and about politics and about uh-huh. various elections and Black Lives Matter. And, of course, I hear nothing but – Bullshit about the patriarchy, which is all I have left to hang out with, Lugo. <laughs> all I've got. All I've got left. Middle child has no time for the patriarchy. Fuck the patriarchy. Yeah, she's oh. just, she just 
men no no <laughs> that's no. that's her answer and, and I, you kind of like that answer like, from her actually I feign, I feign you know indignation like, excellent this is so excellent, excellent. yeah I men so no good. men are bad bad men, men are bad, bad. yeah she you know. just does not like men right now because yeah. all the boys on the online that are trying to pick her up on instagram are jerks are idiots They're yeah old. and they and they are idiots. i mean it is it is that age level of 18 where the maturity of a female 18-year-old and the maturity of a male 18-year-old are yeah. vastly different. Well, it's <laughs> the maturity of the average male up to and including 20 and early 30s because yes. she's, she's very <laughs> – <laughs> she's way too old for her age. Let me put she that is. Way. Well, she had to grow up very fast, yeah. you know, as many, many children of divorce have to do. Well, and, uh, and, But she's turned out very well, and yeah. she certainly doesn't have time for immaturity no, no time for the from some rando on Instagram trying to pick her up. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, here's the thing. To yeah. keep this whole thing going, this whole podcast, home life universe, we need fake sponsors, Blue Gal. We got to have fake sponsors. <laughs> You know, we, we don't have, have to have every fake no. fake sponsor. However, that's the thing. We have a we, we have, will we will turn down a fake sponsor yeah, we if have. they do not align with our values. We have principles, and if you don't <laughs> like them, as the saying goes, we have other principles. Um, <laughs> but our principles this week are very much in line with our values, and we had to turn one of us a fake sponsor away. It's a one nine hundred stars and bars. Um, it's a uh, it's a service offered to people. Uh, in fact, they sent a fake ad along. Do you mind if I do it? It's I'll give them a freebie on this on, on our airtime, and then we will disavow. Because it's so funny. Yes, well, you may. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll do it my best best voiceover voice. Um, I applied for the voiceover work with the Lincoln Project, and apparently I'm too good at it, so they don't want me there. <laughs> in, so, a world. in a world, in a world, in a world. So I'll do that voice for you guys for free right now. Are you a racist Republican who plans on going? <laughs> Who pl- uh, see, this is why they didn't hire me at the Lincoln Project. I, I, I wrote this copy. Are you a racist? Re- are you a racist Republican who plans to go right on being a racist Republican, but is sick and tired of being called a racist Republican? Call one nine hundred stars and bars for that hot, affirming chat that you crave. Let our credible Black Trump supporters reassure you: it's not you, it's the liberal media. Press one for Candace Owens. Press two for Diamond and Silk. Press three for Paris Denard. Press four for Ron Christie. And for more aggressive support for your racist views, press five for either Alan West or David Clark. One nine hundred stars and bars because none of this is your fault. It's Antifa's fault. Antifa. Well, it's the liberal media amplifying Antifa, which is a vast, multi-million, highly organized, very hierarchical uh, movement funded by George Soros and Bill Gates, as we all know. Wrong. Um, <laughs> And the reason I found that funny to write is because that is exactly how Republicans' brains work. Um, it is it is it, locally too. There is simply no room oh, in their yeah, consciousness locally. at all for any acknowledgement that any of this might be their fault, their party's yep. fault, um, that their decisions they've made in their life might be horribly wrong. The people they listen to might be lying to them. They just seek out a narrow or narrow number of people, especially black people. Mm-hmm. We'll tell them that, no, no, you're not the racist. Liberals are the racist. You know, your party freed the slaves. I don't know if you're aware of that, but Abraham Lincoln, the town, you know, the, the town wrapped itself around Lincoln's tomb. Uh, you know, he was a Republican. I don't know if you knew that. And, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what it's like living in the middle of middle America. I believe Blue Gal would like to talk a little bit about knitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk about renaming and how... We are renaming all kinds of things now because it's been discovered or it's it's come to white people's attention mm-hmm. that naming things a certain thing, that places on the map also occupy mental and emotional space. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and the example this week that came right to the top of all of my social media threads was – an organization that actually was a blog for years uh, called Mason Dixon Knitting. And the reason these two allies, I mean, these are good liberal women Mm -hmm. named their blog, Mason Dixon Knitting had nothing to do with race or the civil war or any consciousness of that. 
There are simply ones from Tennessee and ones from north of Tennessee. And they contacted each other via a, ch a knitting chat room back in the early, early days of that message board you know? possibility. Yeah. yeah. And became fast friends and started a blog together and then started a company together. And they've just, this is now their life. And they're pretty famous in the knitting world. They're pretty famous in the knitting world. And they're, and they're good liberals, too. Yeah. I mean, they don't hide their politics. But they, <laughs> the cute, quote unquote, name of their blog and company and all of their social media was Mason Dixon Knitting until this week. Mm -hmm. And they did a post on Instagram about we're not going to be Mason Dixon Knitting anymore because we realize how much that hurts people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not applauding them for this any more than I applaud anybody doing the right thing. Right. But they are now modern daily knitting, you know, which they don't have to change their logo. And I, I realize how expensive it is to do that. That's just, you know, one little white example of a mm -hmm. change, yeah. right? It's, it's not <laughs> the view from space of Black Lives Matter Boulevard or, or the right. Black Lives Matter Square in D.C. It's not right. at that level of importance. Yeah. But it was an example of how all of us need to look at how we examine space yes. and honor and what we might have done completely blindly thinking, oh, it, this doesn't hurt anybody. And all of a sudden realizing, oh, yes, it does. And, and coming to terms with the Civil War, coming to terms with Gone with the Wind, coming to terms yeah, with the Dukes of Hazard, a lot of things that we've accepted as sometimes it's been a compromise with Dixiecrats to get Social Security passed or to right. get the Civil Rights Movement underway. Yeah, 60, 60, 70 years ago, that was true. Yeah, 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 right. 50, 55 years ago. 55 yeah. years ago. Well, I mean, Dixiecrats was, were the, were the ugly the dirty compromise um, of the Roosevelt administration. Right. That's true. You yes, know, that's that, right. That's, that's and, right. And then comes Johnson and the need to, you know, the, the, you make these dirty deals with people who are in, in power mm -hmm. precisely because they have suppressed the right to vote of black people for so long. Yeah. And their, their seats in Congress were so secure that they got all the majority positions because they're right. all based on seniority. Right. So all of these right. Southern white racists had an enormous, a chokehold over the legislative process. And with Mitch McConnell still there, you could argue they still do. Right, right. And and so just recognizing that naming something gives it power mm -hmm. and taking away a name or a monument or taking down symbols that may at the time have seemed not at all harmful but are harmful or those that are really are harmful because yeah. a lot of those confederate things went up in 1964 yeah. a lot of those statues went up in 1964 a lot of those the stars and bars went up on state flags as yeah exactly because fuck you to the civil rights movement right. it's okay to murder black people in our state that's exactly right. what the message they right. were sending so uh and and this is also demographics mm -hmm. you know we i was reading a post um at the conversation about from a linguist about Karens and how why why Karen why not Amy why not Susie right and right. you know why Karen why is Karen the name that people are using to denote a privileged white woman of a certain age because it's threatening perfect. a black man's life with the police because it's perfect it's well but it's also uh, there's a history of it there's a history of Car Karen was the number one white baby name for girls in 1965. <laughs> really? And so that name is is common among women born in 19 white women born in 1965 because it was number 1. So <laughs> that's that's one reason and then there are jokes and there's a comedian I'm sorry I don't remember his name who talks about Karen being hit uh the friend that nobody likes and there there's a whole she goes into the whole background of that name having meaning mm -hmm. and it's not by accident that it's karen um well, and and there's a long and you, you and i are both writers and we're both readers and we both try to read broadly you much more than me these days 
Um, but in 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 fairy tales, in fables, in magic, uh, and in good writing, um, discovering the secret name of a thing, the true mm-hmm. name of a mm-hmm. thing, carries mm-hmm. enormous power. Yeah, um, finding out Rumpelstiltskin's true name um, gives the the person in the story who's not Rumpelstiltskin, whose name I forget, uh, the young woman, enormous power over him. Um, so that's why vocabulary is so important. That's why naming things is so important. That's why s- speaking of things in the true in their true nature is terribly important. Um, it's like if you have a, a weather report. If you had a weatherman who was not allowed to say a weather woman, a, a meteorologist who was not allowed to use the word tornado or twister during tornado season mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Or, or use the word, you know, flood during during flood season. Mm-hmm, what you're mm-hmm. watching in our mainstream media are people bending themselves into all sorts of weird shapes, trying not to say things that are manifestly true. Not not like Republican. <laughs> yeah, like like these are not Trumpists; they're Republicans. Like they, yeah. these people are racist. These people yeah. are racist Republicans, and they had been racist Republicans for a very long time because the Republican Party was set up. The modern Republican Party was set up to attract and cultivate racists, and the idea that this is a, some horrible—it's not even a secret. That's the weird part about it. It is yeah. everyone knows this. It's a it's a vastly well documented truth of the Republican Party, but it's nobody dares talk about it. There's a movement afoot among your, you know, among never Trumpers and the mainstream media and a whole bunch of Republicans. That here's what we're going to do: we're going to pretend this all started in 2016, and mm-hmm. we're not going to allow anyone to bring anything else to the table. Donald Trump is the problem. Once Donald Trump is gone, the problem will be gone. And the party can go back to being the normal, healthy, sane party that was before Trump, which is absolutely untrue. And everyone knows this is what's maddening about being liberal, because we've been through this before over and over again. We went through this during the Bush administration, during the Clinton administration, during the Obama administration, where horrible shit was being done by Republicans that everybody knew was a lie. And no one with a microphone or a camera dare say it's a lie because that violates some weird journalistic taboo. Um, and we're going through it again. And so this is why you have podcasts like this, because we get to talk about things like this because all of our sponsors are fake. Right, um, right. And I I wanted to applaud uh, Rachel Bittacoffer. Mm-hmm. Um, she has been talking this week and, and this morning, especially about the Southern strategy mm-hmm. and how the Southern strategy isn't Southern. It's a national mm-hmm. movement of Republicans Republican strategists to attract racists to their party. And it's not, she doesn't sugarcoat it. This is what's, this is why you saw Confederate flags in Maine when mm-hmm. Donald Trump went there. Well, it's a, it's is, a cancer that's metastasized. Yeah. Right. And, and right. she's going to get herself thrown right off that nice Lincoln project. If she keeps talking like that, <laughs> <laughs> she's doing very well yes, for is. herself. And she I'm is. proud of her. Uh, she said the st- the Southern strategy has been nationalized for two decades by right wing media and GOP campaigns. Mm-hmm. Fear capitalists is what I call them in my book. The South is no longer a region. It's a state of mind. And that Absolutely. state of mind is racism. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I also want to talk just for a minute about NASCAR. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> NASCAR decided that the. Confederate flag had to go. Mm -hmm. And again, Rachel Bittacoffer said, the reason is not just that it's the right thing to do. It's a decision Uh based on financial realities. Well, you've talked a lot about Alabama and why Alabama changed, for example. Yeah, right. Why, Why now the Birmingham Code, which is a statement against racism... It's not called the Birmingham Code. It's the Birmingham Statement, I think. And it's this this whole movement. Birmingham has a black mayor and co- understanding and affirming the rights of all races to convene is the same reason that they got rid of blue laws where you can't sell alcohol on Sundays. And why was that? Because they want conventions to they come to Birmingham, money. Alabama. <laughs> they want money. And nobody wants to hold their convention in a, in a third world racist shithole. Where people are going to call you out and 
boycott your product. Right. Or right. yeah. Yeah. Now we're still and, you know trying to get Ted Nugent in town to do our convention <laughs> here. So that's where we're at. You, but we did get Ted Nugent to do that's our That's right, we did. We did. The local newspaper, our this is how fucked up things are. Yeah. Our local newspaper, which is a right wing rag and always has been, and when it's not doing that, it's all both sides, both sides. Let's all be civil to each other. Sponsored Ted Nugent to come to town mm -hmm. as a noted outdoorsman. Didn't mention any of his <laughs> racism or threatening to murder the first lady yeah. or threatening to kill her the Clinton. The shit that everyone in this town who's a wingnut loves him for. He's just a noted outdoorsman. And look, he's he's the he's the keynote speaker at our wonderful event. So that's where we're at. Anyway, NASCAR. But Tra Travis Go Travis Godell 2002 said, one thing the Republicans are going to have to come to terms with is that the Southern strategy is dead. Millennials are 45% minority and Gen Z is 48% minority. And both generations are pro-ethnic and racial diversity. Uh -huh. Republicans can't shut that down or make it go away. And Rachel Bittacoffer replied, trust me, the five people with brains left in the GOP know this. <laughs> I, I don't know who those people are, but. Well, Mitt um, Romney's one of them. Yeah. Mitt Romney has been talking about this for at least three or four election cycles, that the Republicans have a huge problem coming up mm -hmm. and are going to lose Texas because Hispanic voters used to be reliable Republican, many yeah. of them, re yes. reliable Republican votes because pro-business. Mm -hmm. Well, pro-business and, and, and Catholic family values, honestly. Right. Yeah. Abortion, yeah. et cetera. Right. Exactly. And now with Trump and walls and racism, no. Well, and here, um, let me give yeah. credit to the segregationists for a moment, Blue Gal, <laughs> uh, who were absolutely right about one thing. If you yeah. let your children go to school together, they will grow up not hating each other. Right. So that 45 right. and 48 percent, those people all have friends. <laughs> Right, all no, the same that's age it. cohort, and so that number is 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 enormously larger than that because. But but you see, Chris Hayes has a whole podcast about that this month. I, I don't know what's the most recent one or the mm -hmm. next to last about how schools are resegregated now. Yep, yeah, and that's on purpose. Yes, it is. And desegregating schools changes the world. It does. It absolutely does. Um, we got to move on. I, you had a wonderful conversation with Junior Dude today about The Walking Dead. I did. Back when it was good. <laughs> Back when it was good. It might be good again. I'm not judging. But it, several decades ago when I stopped watching The Walking Dead, there was a period during which Rick Grimes, who's the, who was the major protagonist of the series, and members of his group, this is a story about the zombie apocalypse and post-apocalypse and how the, the real walking dead are the living humans who survived um, and how horrible little alliances among evil people crop up and the worst in humanity and the best in humanity and so forth. And Rick Grimes and his group are this group who, who have survived a whole bunch of things. And by surviving all of these terrible um, tragedies and, and uh, uh, wiping out of so many of their members over and over again, his group has stripped the screening process for potential newcomers down to three questions. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to welcome someone into your group, you got to be you got to be pretty sure they're not going to kill you in the night, um, and but that they can handle themselves. They've got to be tough, and and so the test was to see if they were good, dangerous, or bad, dangerous, and if they'd be a good fit for the group. And those three questions were: How many walkers have you killed? How many people have you killed? And why? So it was very Why simple. did you kill human why beings? Why did you kill human beings? Why did you do this? And, you know why you killed the zombies? Because right. they're zombies. <laughs> and, and you know what? If you've survived this long, you've probably had to kill living people. Mm -hmm. So we need to know why. We need to know what sort of person we're going to let into our, our circle of trust. And I got to thinking about that. And I said, you know, my um, suspicion of my brand new obligatory never Trumper allies Mm -hmm. That are, I'm told by my peers, quit, quit hassling, quit bothering, quit asking hard questions. Stop it. You know, these are, you know, we'll, we'll get rid of them once Trump is gone. Like, yeah, no, it doesn't ever work that way. But I have boiled it down to four questions for my potential allies. If potential allies lie or refuse to answer them, I think we should assume they cannot be trusted. So hmm. the, the four questions are, what do you think? the problem is what do you think the solution is 
how do you think things got this way? And mm. what was your role in making things this way? And if your answer is, well, it's Donald Trump, then, then I have no interest in dealing with you at all. Because we are mm -hmm. not allies. You are interested in getting Donald Trump out of the way of your Republican Party sweeping back to power. So uh, stop a minute. I want to review sure. those questions again, because uh -huh. this this could wind up being a straw man argument. I don't think it is, but mm -hmm. I want to make sure we take the time sure. to to talk about the, the right way to answer these questions in order to join the burn the lifeboats tribe, which I think <laughs> is what you're talking about. Basically, yeah. Well, right. I, I'm, I'm all in favor of anyone who wants to get the Republican Party buried at the crossroads forever, deconstruct uh -huh. and destroy the Republican Party and every one of its manifestations all the way down to the grassroots, disempower all of them. Mm -hmm. And and get Donald Trump as the leader of that party. He's the number one target, but they need to all go. So the question then becomes. So what do you think the problem is? What you're saying is if you say, well, the problem is Donald Trump and Trumpism. There is no such they, thing as Trumpism. And, and history, history started in 2016. Boom. I know or I when the escalator, the escalator yeah. ride. I know I no. can't trust you. I know you're lying. I know you're lying. Because, because so what's the correct answer to that? When, when, what? What do you think the problem is? The problem what is, is the, the problem? The Republican Party. The mm -hmm. Republican Party, the Republican-controlled media, Fox News, hate radio, all of which stretch back for decades. Mm -hmm. um, the Southern mm -hmm. strategy is, is the problem. Um, Lee Atwater is the problem. Uh, Ronald mm -hmm. Reagan bringing evangelicals into the party is the problem. And you all being completely cool with this up until you were trying to get Ted Cruz nominated because he would be good enough. Um, and then Donald Trump won the Republican primaries with more votes than any Republican in history. And suddenly, he's not a Republican. This isn't my party. I have no idea what happened. And none of this is my responsibility. I know you're lying. And I know so you why just, you're lying. You just answered the question, how do you think things got this way? Right. And it's something, something Donald Trump. Right. And 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 as you said, you, you have in our notes about Charlie Sykes talking to Christine Todd Whitman. Yes. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Right. Yeah. Because this I, is I, where that how do you think things got this way answer is wrong. <laughs> and, and part of what I do is I interrogate other podcasts, especially Never Trump podcasts. It's not something that I think any other liberal does. Yeah. Um, it's part of my long record of doing things that are boring and unpleasant until they suddenly turn out to be true. Like, holy shit, when did that happen? And then I go through my archives and say, I'm here and here and here. So I do listen to the Bulwark podcasts, they're plural, and every week, every, I'm sorry, every episode, pretty much, I don't listen to all of them, but I skip through them, you know, pretty rigorously, and they're telling the same narrative. They use the same why over and over, and over again. The same yeah. why, it's all Donald Trump. It's all Trump, it's all Trumpism, it's all Trump world, these are all Trump supporters, none of this is the Republican Party, none of, you know, Maybe conservative media, depending on how sort of active the guest is, Charlie Sykes will say, you know, I have a very complicated relationship with Rush Limbaugh. You know, Lord. He, inv he invented conservative media, but he's gotten so, you know, crazy. But liberals are bad, too. And so he's clearly aware that he was the problem. And he just would rather rip his own arms off than admit it. So I'm watching in real time as and, – and I've said this on, on uh, Twitter today um, – so it disappeared into the ether. The, the ch whatever change you're looking for depends on where the media points its camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you and I can be as right as we want to be and as righteous as we want to be and as eloquent as we want to be and our liberal allies and friends can be have been writing about this shit for decades. And if we're not on Morning Joe, we don't exist. That's... Except that is changing because of the citizens that have cameras. Exactly, exactly right. There is such a um, an overwhelming number of social media stories being told on video that all have the same narrative. Right. That the critical mass can no longer be ignored. Yes. Uh, military, well, militarized. I'm going to stop you there, Drift Glass, yeah. because critical mass. You mean white people? I do. I absolutely. I do. Right. Well, no, no. Right. I mean critical mass. I mean white. I mean TV executives. Right. Remember, there were huge protests of the Iraq War. Right, and, and, and the, they and, didn't happen. Right. It, and it the was news media just were not covered. We're not going to fucking cover it. Meanwhile, right. every right. group of right wing idiots who want to pretend they never heard of George Bush called the Tea Party 
in every Ramada parking lot got full-time wall-to-wall coverage. Absolutely. What does that tell you about the media's priorities? It's it's conservatives are are patriots and and socially responsible and righteous and angry, and liberals are just yeah, 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 yeah. we don't need to pay attention to them. So the I'm watching in real time as people who have access to uh, cable news shows, op-ed columns, all of the large media platforms building a narrative. They're building it through every means possible, through their ads, through their podcasts, through their columns, everywhere, that this problem began in 2016. The problem is Donald Trump. And the Christine Todd Whitman interview was interesting because it was Charlie Sykes and her talking. And according to them, Republicans were never into voter fraud conspiracies or su- voter suppression ever, never until Donald Trump came along. Um, they stumbled innocently into it uh, by taking the very, oh, he's very. Never heard of, he's never heard of Broward County, Florida. La, 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 la. This is why you're not allowed on the, on their podcast. Honey, That's why I'm not allowed on because I have memory of uh-huh. the Brooks Brothers riot. Right. Yes. No, okay. instead, instead, Republicans stumbled innocently into the excesses they now do by taking very few ex- examples of actual fraud, like 0.0002%, and wildly overreacting, overreacting to them, but with the noblest of intentions. All they care about was voter integrity, and they just overreacted. It certainly wasn't a, it wasn't a conspiracy. It wasn't some sort of organized to stop black effort. To stop people from voting. No, 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 no. It, no. it just it turned out that those policies had that as a side effect, but it was never uh-huh. the intention. So, and this is what they're saying to each other. Um, meanwhile, uh, they agree that Donald Trump got, quote, the public to elect him because, quote, the public was frustrated with the do nothing Congress. You know, the Mitch McConnell the do nothing Congress-, Congress, which is just a Congress. It's not made up of one no, political party no, over no, another. It's a do nothing Congress. Who knows, right? who does what? I mean, no one knows how government works. That's just crazy talk. But now the same public, quote unquote, is tired of Donald Trump's antics which was so much bullshit packed into such a small space. I did not know where to start. Yeah, like, no, because no, you've the got pu- the public and you've got it. Well, and it, it's my article from 2016, from yeah. summer of 2016. Don't you dare call it Trumpism. Yeah. If you Google, don't you dare call it Trumpism, you will see that I predicted all of this as it was happening oh, yeah. because it was because it was happening in the summer of 2016. Yeah, it was all there. They, the Morning Joe crew and the mainstream media was saying, oh, look at this Trumpism that's happening. Oh God, Where did Trumpism. it come from? Wow, Trumpism is really bad. We really don't want Trumpism and not at all acknowledging in any way that these are Republican primary voters. No, These people did not fall off a truck into the Republican Party. They aren't brand new to the Republican politics. No, this, these are the re, the people you are interviewing on your TV shows, CNN, mm-hmm. who love Donald Trump, voted for Bush twice, voted for Romney, mm-hmm. voted for Nixon if they're old enough. Right, they've been Republicans for a really long time. Yes, they have. And and, <laughs> and, and just a small point: the public actually elected Hillary Clinton. The public but, elected Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and which is, again, a thing that they didn't mention. But it's this abstracting of, I don't want to call them Republicans because then my whole argument falls apart and I look like a fucking liar, which Charlie Sykes is. So mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to say that the public, broadly speaking, wanted this guy as a disruptor because the do-nothing Congress is not doing nothing. But they, the public's gotten tired the of generic, it. The generic, let's repeat that, yeah. the generic do-nothing do Congress. Congress. That's well, remarkable. Who, yes. Again, who knows who does what where? No, no one knows how, <laughs> again, no one knows how government works at all or who's responsible for anything, which gets us back to the four questions. What do you mean? when you say uh, what's your role in making this and and we i've expanded those four questions into three others specifically for the media and those three questions are what do you mean when you say voters Mm -hmm. what do you mean when you say americans especially the american people and what specifically do you mean when you say the public because i have a feeling what you're talking about really in most cases are Republicans or whites or white, or people. white conservatives exactly. or something completely different from Americans in general. And, right. And You're are, using that as a, as a cover up. And there are, again, getting back to Rumpelstiltskin, there's enormous <laughs> power in naming things, calling things by their true name. What you are saying is that racist Republican voters elected a racist 
demagogue because he reflected their racist values. But you would rather, again, tear your own head off than ever say anything remotely like this because you want, after Donald Trump is gone, for the Republican Party to be generally absolved of any responsibility for him. We're going to convict a few people in the administration who are the more lunatic you know, ones, but we're going to give everyone who voted for him an amnesty. You didn't know what you were doing. You just were frustrated by both sides and the corrupt duopoly. So you're, you're all forgiven. And the people who went along with him didn't really want to go along with him. They just thought the best way to get what they wanted done for the American people was to go along with him, but it got too late and they, they, they couldn't catch up and they were sort of trapped. And you got to understand, I just love the country so much. That's why I cheated on my wife. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is happening right now in front of everyone. And everyone's going along with it. Everyone's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. Don't ask too many questions. Don't push too hard. Once Donald Trump's out of the way, then we can settle scores. No, once Donald Trump is out of the way, you, my liberal friends, will be gone from the picture. You will simply cease to exist. How do I know this is true? Because this week was the week when uh, Steve Schmidt. Oh, you're not. Don't skip over Noah Rothman. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Noah Rothman. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Never, never Your skip sound Noah editor, Rothman. Wait, time out. <laughs> yeah. My sound editor says, don't do that. Um, Morning Joe's most, most punchable poltroon. Noah Rothman, Noah Rothman, because he goes on television to be an obnoxious asshole. And a whiny. A yes. smirking, obnoxious asshole, who's also the online editor of Commentary Magazine, which is why he gets to be on TV. Um, and he has his new podcast out today, which is entitled Hostage to Our Radicals. And apparently, according to Noah Rothman, who, again, gets to be seen by orders of magnitude more people than you and I will ever be seen by or heard by. His story is the Democratic Party is self-radicalizing blue gal, and the Republican Party seems incapable of capitalizing on that. And the country, you know, the American people, wait to yeah. see which radical group will govern it next. That's, <sighs> that's the story. Both sides are equally extreme, and there's all these good, moderate people like Noah Rothman stranded in the middle. And, That's and, racist. Of that course it is. is racist. And uh, like, okay, the last person we elected was this nice centrist guy named Barack Obama, who you shit all over, you lost your mind, and then you elected the king of the birthers. The person we're nominating this time is Joe Biden. <laughs> is Joe yeah. Biden. The old white guy, Joe Biden. Which yes. is to say, nothing Democrats say or do will change the narrative. The narrative is always going. The extremes on both sides are destroying America. And yeah. us up here in Morning Joe and our panel here and you guys over at the, the Bulwark and our friends over here uh, on this publication and, and our friend Noah Rothman over here uh, and our, our guys over at uh, the Niskanen Institute and all of our, our third way organizations, we're the reasonable center. And we're here as the last line of defense against the extremes on both sides. That is your future, boys and girls. That is what's happening right now. They're laying the predicate for that. Um, and now we'll talk about Steve Schmidt for one minute. Sure. Um, this is what cracks me up about not having, um, anything but fake sponsors and being free to say whatever we wish, whenever we wish to, um, this week, MSC, MSNBC's little lost lamb, who has finally returned to the fold, Steve Schmidt scored huge kudos across social media all across his peers in the, in, in uh, on television um, by saying, you know what, you know what, you know what, what Donald Trump is the second Confederate president there. I said it. I said it. I dare you all to contradict me. And Oh my fucking God, this is so brilliant. It is such genius, such a genius observation. Who, but Steve Schmidt could possibly have yada, yada, yada. And those of you podcast listeners might sound, this might sound familiar to you because <laughs> two years ago in episode 448 of this podcast, the title of that podcast was called The Second President of the Confederacy. So if you'd like to know what brilliant insights your favorite Never Trumpers will be stumbling into two years from now, just listen to this podcast today because guarantee you they will be stopping by long enough to steal our shit and file the serial numbers off. And I got some blowback from 
boys and girls on the internet who, uh, who said, I, dude, I don't care where the good ideas come from. You know what? I kind of do. I kind of do. I kind of care that the people who have been right all along are, there's such a concerted effort to marginalize us, to pretend we don't exist and pretend that we have nothing to say. Meanwhile, when our ideas, our phrases, our words, our critiques of the Republican Party show up in the mouths of Republicans, let's have a fucking parade. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's great. If that is true, if that's objectively true, why not throw a parade for the people who are right all along? Yeah. Well, that, Dear class, that's never going to happen. Well, because we'd have to start asking those four questions. Yes. And those right. four questions are things that people who actually control the cameras and control the op-ed pages and give Brett They don't Stevens want to admit their people. complicity with why things are the way they no. are today. And that's Ever. that is the prime the prime directive. The prime directive is not protecting American democracy. The prime directive is protecting their colleagues and their privilege. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. will never yeah, happen. Often, oftentimes it's white privilege. Oh, yeah, oh, I, no, absolutely. absolutely. Um, we have to sound an alarm, Drift Glass. Yes, we do. Uh, there was an article in our local paper today. U.S. voter registration of new voters is way down. Yes. Due to the pandemic. Yes. Uh it's important that we all do contact tracing for voting. Yes. I have that that really woke me up this morning. I've got to get on social media. I've got to contact everybody I know, talk to all of my friends from college, everybody and mm-hmm. make sure they're registered to vote. Yep. And make it my responsibility to get them registered to vote. Mhm. Uh, I've got to talk to my children about talking to their friends about registering to vote Mm -hmm. and go to vote.org and find out how in your state people can register to vote. Sometimes it is online Mm -hmm. and blast it. We have to do that. Yes. All Uh, all the time. All over. All Mm -hmm. the time, especially with young voters and new voters. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is alarming. And uh, it's. It's as alarming as the lines in Georgia this week. Oh, God. Yeah. Which yeah. we've really got to talk about. Yeah, uh, no, go ahead. Well, just the governor of Georgia is a corrupt asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. He's a corrupt, corrupt asshole. He belongs in jail. White there. supremacist, racist yeah. asshole who set up the system so that black voters would be excluded from their right to vote mm-hmm. and be put in, in mortal peril by trying to exercise the franchise. Meanwhile, white voters had to wait in line five minutes to cast a ballot. Yeah. And As... John Roberts should have three new justices on the Supreme Court next year to unstack the court and make this right. Oh, John Roberts, I mean, at this point, it's so patently obvious that mm-hmm. that his decisions, his really big decisions, you know, the Voting Rights Act decision to gut the Voting Rights Act, when you could literally hear, like one hears, used to hear NASCAR engines, you could hear... All the Republican states gearing up to deny voting rights to black people, to mm-hmm. students, to young people, to anyone who might vote against them. They were just Everybody waiting. But gun owners, yeah. yeah. Oh, gun owners might as well, you know, you can just send your pistol in. It'll vote for you. Um, but southern states were, were lining up, southern states, Republican states were lining up to take voting rights away from people. They just were waiting for a Supreme Court justice who was corrupt enough and Republican enough who would pull the trigger for them. And they got it. And any fantasies anyone ever had that that the judiciary is salvageable, that you can you can just sort of wait through, you know, who who cares, who wins, whatever, whatever. No, these people are going to be with us for a generation and they're going to be fighting every inch of the way to keep Southern, to keep white Republicans in power, even if it's the power to stand on the, the country's throat and prevent anything from happening, which is what Mitch McConnell did. When Barack Obama was president, that's sufficient. As long as they're killing the country, they don't have to have Donald Trump out front. Donald Trump's actually bad for the Republican Party. They're much better when when they just choke off the oxygen supply from Congress Mm -hmm. by using Mm -hmm. all of uh, Mitch McConnell's tricks in the Senate to kill anything that comes his way. Well, and and all of the investigations in the House to stymie any Democratic yeah. administration. Yeah. And then you can yeah. say the public is frustrated with the do-nothing Congress. With the do-nothing out. Congress. Yeah. And you can – never mind. Yeah. I was about to say um, a bad word, but, you know, I don't use usually swear on this podcast, so I'll just <laughs> back right off. You have, you have a note in here about John Cleese of Monty oh. Python. Love his work on Monty Python. He is, uh, in his old age, playing the smug asshole over yeah. and over again. Yes, he is. 
and I get it. Uh, you know, he was he was part of Monty Python because he was the most educated of all of them to play yeah. the guy in the bowler. Yes. Uh, who is, you know, part of the class system in England is you do you have this class system and this. And now he is John that Cleese, guy. John Cleese was the upperclassman of of that troop. Uh-huh. And uh, his tweet of being a smug asshole. Can I read the tweet? Please go right ahead. And I, I say I, this. I subtitle this was what is it about old English guys? Yeah, well, I, you know. I say that because my uh, mother, my late mother's late husband was that guy. Well, and your your father-in-law is kind of in many ways. He calls himself to the children grumpa, yeah. not grandpa. Yeah. Cuz being grumpy is his his trademark. Provenance. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's 83 years old. He does a New York Times crossword puzzle in ink. He's entitled to be grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, he called it on Joe Biden way, way long ago, mm-hmm. said, no, Joe Biden's my guy. And I thought, oh, dad, you're 83. Of course you love Joe. And you're a Pennsylvania union guy. Of course right. you love Joe Biden. Of course. But, you know, he was right. And he, he got his right. wish and we didn't. So curse him. Yeah, curse right. Him da, da, da. OK, <laughs> so John Cleese's tweet was, I'm very confused about toppling statues. The Greeks already. He's an ass. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> already, no. oh you're going to go off. Yeah, asshole. Okay. Go the ahead. Greeks, yeah. whose civilization has long been admired in the West. Uh-huh. Again, <laughs> just you could have stopped right there, John. Uh-huh. <laughs> Believed that in the ancient world, a cultured society was only possible if it was based on slavery. So, should we be getting rid of statues of Socrates and Aristotle? Well, I got rid of both of mine. So, I'll just say that <laughs> right up front. <laughs> We replaced them with a statue of Sojourner Truth. Yes. And uh, that Maya, worked out real well and for Maya us. Angelou. Yeah. So there you go. So suck yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, suck come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so you want to read your reply to oh, John Cleese? I replied Twitter. because when in this life do you get a chance to kick John Cleese in the balls? Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. I'm not saying it'll make any difference to him or I'll be acknowledged in any way. Check. Forget but it. <laughs> I just, I, I asked John Cleese in the voice uh, of a stupid American, because we're all stupid Americans, mm-hmm. remind me again, because I forget, how many statues commemorating the heroism of the Third Reich are there in the greater London metropolitan area? And for the record, there are none. There are also no statues commemorating the Third Reich anywhere in Germany. In Germany, which I'm they sure, banned them. Which I'm yes. sure John Cleese knows, but it's much more fun being an asshole on Twitter than, than you know, I guess he's bored on an island somewhere. Hey, I'll, I'll go well, pick a fight. And I want to do a hat tip to my friend Fran, who, you know, we have the same name, so we're soul sisters. Uh-huh. Uh, she tweeted this morning that she actually turned around and spoke to a couple of guys at Home Depot uh, this week who were going along the same lines as John Cleese of when does it all end? We're toppling statues. When does it all end? It's like, well, you know, when you, when, <laughs> when you see a statue of Hitler in Germany, get back to me, yeah. you know, traitors and war criminals don't get statues. No. We clean those up and remove them. Then we can talk about, Oh, when will it all end? Uh, speaking of, uh, Monuments to racism. Yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. Is going to hold a campaign rally on Juneteenth, the holiday marking the emancipation of slaves, the the final ma- emancipation of the yeah. last slaves to find out but, about. But the word finally got to Texas. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. And he's going to hold it in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the site of the 1921 massacre of Black Wall Street. Hundreds of African Americans died in 1921 mm-hmm. at the hands of white rioters. Clan mm-hmm. and sheriff yeah. and I believe right. aircraft were employed. Aircraft um, were involved to bomb as well. them. It was a it was a uh, it was a genocide. It was a local genocide yep. against the black population, which completely disappeared from the history books. And until, until Watchmen, right? Well, well it, it, it you know if you are African American or have African American friends, especially of a certain age. Uh, you heard about it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, but mm-hmm. it wasn't taught in school. It certainly wasn't taught uh, in Oklahoma. Well, and, uh, and it came into popular consciousness yes, with Watchmen. With the Watchmen. With yeah. Watchmen. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. holy shit! That oh, this really happened. Holy fuck! This really happened. And mm-hmm. and but you know, I'm not in a position to say, nor should I be in a position to say things are changing. That's not up to me. But 
I really hope things are changing just a little bit. I really, really, really hope that Confederate statues come down all over the country and consciousness of actual American history goes up because the more we try to lie about who we were and who we are, the more we're going to fuck up who we're going to be. That's right. That's right. Uh, John Bolton made headlines on a Friday yes, at did. the beginning of summer yeah. instead of at an impeachment trial. Right. And so I have no energy for him. I don't either. Well, and I just, this is again, a, a, a snarky, if you will, a like John Cleese sort of question. Um, <laughs> so is John, is John Bolton, uh, my, to my allies out there, my, my betters, my liberal betters, the people who tell me what to do and say, because I, I embarrass them at parties. Um, is John Bolton still our ally? Is he still my mandatory ally? Is he still the hero of the resistance? Because I haven't seen this month's list of who are on our side and who are not on our side. So I lose track. Um, uh, maybe if you could just drop me a copy of that memo, I, I really would appreciate that because John Bolton has always been a, an asshole. And the fact that he decided to make a uh, profit off of it and squeeze a book deal out of it and, and up his notoriety and his television presence out of it doesn't surprise me, but he was always going to revert to type and his type is a terrible, terrible person. The only thing I want to see come out of this whole John Bolton thing is a civil war within the Republican Party. Yeah. Because there are people who just adore John Bolton. Uh Pammy Atlas used to just be, you know, over the moon. I won't use I won't use dirty words, but Mm -hmm. over the moon with John Bolton and how he defended Israel and was against the U.N. and Israel, Israel, Israel. And, uh, you know, that was her thing. And that was. And the John Muslim Bolton. enemy. The Muslim yeah. enemy is coming for us all. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and here is a rift between the John Bolton is a true conservative hero, which, you know, again, Pammy was over the moon when John Bolton was national security advisor to Trump. That brought her world together. Oh, yes. Finally. And and if this creates a civil war and makes her stomach turn, yeah. good. <laughs> well, fight between the John Birch Society and these stupid John Birch Society right. is one I want to buy tickets to. <laughs> uh, let's do a news roundup real quick. All right. Um, Donald Trump said this week he will make racism go away, and it will happen very quickly and easily. So I assume Jared's in charge of it because he makes everything go away quickly and easily. Good, good call. Good Re- call. And here's the thing. I think he just took the, the his his speech, his brain his pattern. COVID speech. His COVID yeah. speech and just repeated it and, and took out the word COVID and put in the word racism. So, yep, he did. Yeah. I think that's a that's a real true fact. Okay. Yeah. Customs and Border Protection used money meant for food medicine and used it for dirt bikes and ATVs, says the General Accounting Office. Instead of helping migrants, said a top House Democrat, Customs and Border Protection broke the law by spending this taxpayer money on things that were not authorized. That's at the low end of looting the, the Treasury. At the high end, you have Steve Mnuchin refusing to disclose which businesses received $500 billion in bailout funds, claiming this info, this information is confidential, Blue Gal, which means... And, and Katie Porter gave that report an F. Yes. And you know what <laughs> the F stands for? something about it. <laughs> yeah. The F stands for, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it stands for, and it's not a nice word. No. Katie's, Katie said, I'm on it. Like, yeah. she's on it. I, you know and what, you she know has what? power to do something about it. I, it 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 will restore my faith in government, which is mm-hmm. sorely tested, when I know that there's someone out there on top of shit like this. Well, that's that's why I said this morning on Twitter, I need two people in this world. I need you, Drift Glass, and I need Katie Porter. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I'm basically running a, a distant second in that race. Just to Katie, Well, and then yeah. you said you said something so nice. You said Katie, you and Katie Porter are spirit sisters or you something. Are. You, like you spirit, she's your spirit animal. That's you share an you share that passionate, smart girl DNA or smart person well, DNA. You. I mean, you're that, both ladies was- and... That flattered me so much. Thank well, you. you. know, that patriarch um, is hanging on by his nails, baby. <laughs> you got to do something. Uh, at least 19 states are seeing a rise in the number of new coronavirus cases and hospitalizations in at least nine states mm-hmm. that have been on the rise since Memorial Day. Also, the White House Coronavirus Task Force hasn't held a daily briefing in more than a month because Donald Trump's bored with it. Yeah, it's over. It's all done. Um, now, Everyone knows polls are a snapshot and snapshots aren't reality. But this, 
I am taking all the good news I can get. And so mm-hmm. here's some good news. 82% of Americans want to ban police from using chokeholds. 83 want to ban racial profiling. 92% want federal police to be required to wear body cameras. 89% of Americans want to require police to give the people they stop their badge number and name and reason for the stop. 91% support independent investigations of police departments that show patterns of misconduct. 75% of Americans, including 60% of Republicans, support allowing victims of police misconduct to sue police departments for damages. That is amazing. It's also common sense. And it you is. would think that that's, that's it. I I was uh, asked by Junior Dude today, what are you going to talk about on the podcast? And I started to tell him some of the things. He said, make sure you talk about police reform, Mom. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> no problem. But the the point that I made to him and I'll make here is – you know, this is an opportunity to get really super involved with your local government. Yes. Oh, as God, yeah. Obama said last week in his speech about this whole thing and his his task force on policing. And so, you know, he had a whole book. He had a whole committee. Sure. He was working on this and it got shredded because the reason Donald Trump was elected by Republicans was to shred all memory of the black president. Right. And roll back everything he touched. Yes. Everything he touched. And so. You know, the work is there to fix these things. Uh, and Joe Biden was in on that. And every time I've heard him speak about it, he really understands the role of the federal government is to either bribe or punish with federal funds, police yeah. departments that behave themselves. That's exactly right. And you can set up guidelines and standards by which you earn federal dollars for your police department. Mm-hmm. And that money can be withheld if you don't meet up to that standard. That's really the limit at which a president or a federal government can influence policing. Well, it well, really happens at the city council or state level. And let me, let me just state police. Let me just say, as someone who worked in workforce development for mm-hmm. a decade, more than a decade, um, in, at, at fairly high levels of management in the city of Chicago, that's where I was. Um, mm-hmm. This money comes to you if you meet certain criteria. Right, right. And, and it's, right. it's it's formula based. So, you know, the city of this size, region of this size gets X percent of what goes to your state. And it's, none of that's of interest to anyone. But there are really clear, rigorous standards of the amount of people you're going to do this to and do that for and so on and so forth built into the funding. If you right. don't meet those numbers, you don't get the money. And yeah. it's that simple. That is how federal governments induce local governments to do things that they should be doing or, or, and or, this is why we don't have a one hour school day where you walk in, say the pledge and leave right? is because there are federal dollars that are associated with having special needs students include, included in the classroom. Exactly. Making sure that their reading is taught in a certain way, mm-hmm. making sure that ESL students provide or have services provided to them. And all of that comes with federal money after you have met these standards and, that I, I call it a bribe. I'm I'm only half kidding. It right. is a way that the federal government can control how things unfold in now, a situation. Right. It's it's a blunt instrument. I will admit that yeah. absolutely. And right. leaving well, flexibility. That's why local government, right? Yeah. That's why you need to be keep an eye on your city council and or your why... state legislature or however it is it is actually legislated into existence that you're going to train your cops and give them body cameras and make sure they're on and working. Mm-hmm. So, well, and this is why every uh student at school now and this is their, these are home delivered meals gets two milks. <laughs> now, now there's a whole bunch of them who don't want any and and will just let it go to waste and it's just like why are you why the why are you doing this to me? Why are you sending this to my house? It's because the the district, state and federal guidelines are you need to check these 10 boxes. Now, mm-hmm. some of that gets very silly. I admit it. it. It isn't perfect. The federal government is, again, a blunt instrument, but it. And it sometimes works. it's in the hands of big dairy. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Right. But yeah, that's why paying attention to what goes on on the ground at your local city council mayor's race is hugely important because those are the people who can adjust based on circumstances. And if the circumstances are we want black people discriminated against, you're going to get that government. You're going to get right. that police force. And if it's like we recognize that white supremacy fucks us all up, it screws mm-hmm. up our transportation system. It, it There's no good mass transit. Housing stock goes to rot. 
property values drop, all because white people are terrified of moving to armed enclaves. We need to stop that. that then that's the government you're going to get. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, did not tell the White House that he planned to release a video admitting that it was a mistake for him to appear in a photo op with Trump outside of St. John's Church last week before publishing his pre-recorded apology during which he declared, I should not have been there. He also, it has been reported by the New Yorker that uh, he was in a knockdown drag out shouting match with Donald Trump in the Oval Office mm-hmm. over use of military forces, U.S. military forces mm-hmm. to uh, quell the protesters nationwide, yeah. which was what Donald Trump wanted to do. And he looks, I don't know if you've looked at his picture, but he looks like, Judge Dredd, you know, he's he's got that very square jaw and big eyebrows. And and the reporter for The New Yorker magazine told Chris Hayes, look, uh, he's a bully. He's as big a bully as Trump. He that's how he got to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is he's he will shout orders at you. Uh And he out shouted Trump in the Oval Office. And that is why we do not have I mean, in part. Part of it is it would be completely unconstitutional, which somehow might actually – there might actually be a mutiny in the military. Which would be – But the reason Donald Trump backed down on this was because a guy with as loud a voice and as belligerent as Donald Trump told mm-hmm. him where to get off. Wearing a uniform, probably showing him the medals on his chest going – Right. Yeah. And saying, no fucking way. We're not doing that. That's mm-hmm. not happening. Yeah. Uh, More than 1.5 million Americans filed new unemployment claims last week, adding to the tens of millions of people who've applied since the pandemic began. That's 44 million people more than have applied for unemployment benefits, about 29 percent of the workforce. Additionally, uh, about 700,000 gig and formerly self-employed workers have filed new claims uh, through the federal pandemic unemployment assistance program. That's a that's a lot of people unemployed and and the economy is not coming back anytime soon. And they better do something about it because we got a huge crisis coming up when the rent is due. Oh, and in August, it's going to be, oh, God, it it just, yeah. Larry Kudlow today, look, I'm not the health expert. (laughs) Then he should have stopped. Then he should have stopped. But no. (laughs) He said, on a so-called spike, I spoke to our health expert experts at some length last evening they're saying there is no second spike let me repeat that there is no second spike yeah and then he get did it, it wall street get and it he, no then, second spike wall street okay and then he did a second rail right off that hooker's ass so yeah sure um star trek salt monster mike pence deleted the tweet which showed trump campaign staff packed shoulder to shoulder and not wearing face masks or social distancing In a party line vote, the Senate Judiciary Committee authorized subpoenas targeting former Obama administration officials involved in the Benghazi, 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 oh wait, no, Um, involved in, you know, the Russia investigation, because we're going to investigate the investigators. Lindsey Graham now has the authority to subpoena documents and more than 50 individuals related to the Russia investigation, including former FBI Director James Comey, John Brennan. James Clapper, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Uh, At one point, he said, careful what you wish for about this. He was he was not wanting to have televised hearings with these folks coming on board and saying, oh, no, all of us agree. Yeah. Donald Trump is president because of Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Here's some here's more proof. Shall we want to do that in an election year in public in front of cameras Yeah, on television Um, and make that the headline? If you want to attend a Trump hate rally, uh, you will now have to sign a liability waiver in case you get the liberal Soros hoax virus while you're there, which is the most Republican thing ever. You whip up a mob into supporting some incredibly stupid, dangerous thing. And when it all blows up, you skate away by saying, hey, was it your fault? Yeah, this this lack of accountability with Trump isn't a new thing in Republican land. No, it's sort of a uh, bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. This week, the uh, financial markets finally began coming to terms with the idea that COVID-19 isn't going anywhere. And as a result, the stock market suffered its worst day since March, with the Dow dropping more than 1,800 points. And this is why Larry Kudlow had to come out today and be a not a health expert. Yeah. I say goodbye. Um, and this is uh, in local news. It's sort of local because it's Chicago. 
Video shows more than a dozen Chicago police officers lounging and making popcorn in Representative Bobby Rush's campaign office amid looting in the city's south side, according to Mayor Lightfoot and according to video. They apparently broke into his office and just decided to put their feet up and make some coffee and popcorn and let the city burn because fuck you. These are the same. These are the 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 uh, the same lineage of chicago cops who were beating up hippies in grant park in 1968 Mm -hmm. the the same Mm -hmm. goddamn thing this is why you have to change you have to restructure the police department completely because they will just they will just keep doing this because they're the the end of the day they're gonna say look we have unions we have guns what are you gonna do and that's a pretty powerful argument if you're a public who's like you know what just keep the the bad people off my block and i don't give a shit what you do well and this whole outrage over we've lost the city lakeshore drive was closed lakeshore yeah. drive the, the idea of we lost, lost the, city the city because lakeshore drive is now closed because of black lives matter protests they close lakeshore drive every several year. weekends a summer every year i'm i'm bike i biked on lakeshore drive before it's called bike the drive it happens Every year, a couple early in the morning, you get out and you ride. It's a lovely bike, but it was like, what the hell? No, you didn't lose anything. What are you talking about? Well, and it's the Fox Newsification of politics. It's we're going to put the things on TV that make old white people terrified that the Soros mob of scary black people is going to come and destroy America. Yeah. And Tucker Carlson lost six advertisers this week. It's not going to make any difference because Fox News. I learned this week, gets the majority of their revenue from cable news company, cable companies. That's right. They convince their loyal viewers that your cable company wants to dump Fox News. Make sure you call them Uh and keep your Fox News on. Cable companies get all these phone calls and then Fox is able to charge cable companies more than double. It's like a dollar 80 a month per customer. Mm -hmm. The Fox tax. Yeah. And they're able to charge way more than any other cable news outlet because they're able to whip their viewers into a frenzy of phoning in to cable companies. Mm-hmm. And that's what they care. Believe me, they don't care what I call in. The, right. the Sinclair Broadcasting, local Sinclair station and the Fox station are not going to shut down or change their policy because I called in. That's not right. how this works. But it is – I don't remember anywhere in the First Amendment – maybe I'm just wrong – uh, anything about a Fox tax or network executives deciding what goes on the air or operating at a mm-hmm. loss. I don't remember any of that. Apparently that's all in there somewhere under the first amendment. I just am unaware that, you know, it's implied by the freedom of the press. Yeah. And, and Tucker Carlson is now, you know, the, the Goebbels. Well, showing a bunch of Confederate statues coming down and saying what he clearly implied, black people didn't build this country. Yeah, he said he clearly yeah. implied that he did. Yeah, with with all these statues coming down, they didn't build this country. You know, you did. Now it's out in the open, and now that it's out in the open, it's been out in the open for anyone who's bothered to pay attention for decades. But now that it's really out in the open, now that his dick is all the way out, now that the pants are all the way down, this is now the time when you decide which side you're on, because there's really two sides left, and that's why asking your potential allies basic questions about what do you think the problem really is and how do you Mm -hmm. think we got here and how long has this been going on and what role did you play charlie sykes rick wilson steve schmidt what role did you play in in making this debacle happen bringing this all down in our heads well and and i want to remind people that the reason that drift glass and i are pushing this and he pushes harder than i do but the reason we're pushing this is we are so terrified of what happens next We are. Absolutely. We thought Bush was the worst. We thought George W. Bush was the worst president we could ever have. And so bad. And that no one would ever forget how bad George W. Bush was lying us into war and destroying the economy. We would never go back to having a Republican president again, right? And the people around him, the people who supported him, the people who wore, who beat the war drums, the the loudest water carriers for that catastrophic catastrophically failed they have to go away forever in shame right they would, they would have to be they would be exiled forever and and you know you don't have to put me or digby on television for the rest of our lives but finally 
the 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 boot the right wing boot on the throat of the media will be lifted up and we can have an honest conversation about that the Republican Party is fucked up and we need to fix it because it's a danger to our country. That didn't happen, did it? The Republican Party was let off the hook en masse. They suddenly became tea partiers. You look up and oh God, David Frum, speechwriter, has his own column in the in, in, in at the Atlantic. And there's Michael Gerson and he's here. And David Brooks, who was a, a weekly standard asshole who called people like me stupid and crazy and un-American, uh, is now got a job for fucking life at New York, New York Times. And there's Brett Stevens, and there's Ross Duthat. And holy shit, the entire constellation of idiots who helped George Bush wreck this country are now permanent fixtures in the media and get to decide what stories we're going to cover. What we're going to talk about. We're not right, gonna talk what about. we're going to talk about. And that's why this matters. That's why we want to burn the lifeboat is because if you don't burn the lifeboats, you are going to have the Tom Cottons. You're going to have your Social Security grand bargained away. You're going to have to worry about the water coming out of your faucet. These are real things that are going to happen. You know what you're going to have, and- Blue Gal? You're going to have a second wave. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're guy. no you're no medical expert. Yeah, well, actually, it's a third or fourth or fifth wave at this point because Republicans. Well, it's all the off. first wave, as you said that to me this morning. Mm-hmm. We we're not out of the first wave yet. No, no, because it's spreading. The way it's spreading is just continuous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love you, Drift Glass. I love you, Blue Gal. You know what we do each week on this show? Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Shotzi. Shotzi is a clone, I swear, or Zeppo is a yeah. clone of Shotzi. It's, this is an identical cat to our Zeppo, our Zeppo who passed away at a, the ripe old age of 18 and a half. She mm-hmm. had an amazing life. Shotzi is a beautiful cat. You should go visit her at our Facebook page and website. I have heard from Shotzi's owner that uh, Shotzi loved to sit on uh suitcases and backpacks as yeah. the packing for a trip and stick out her tongue and say nana nana i win <laughs> you don't get to go cuz i'm sitting on the suitcase or backpack or whatever is being packed at the moment i'm just going to sit on it right here and uh she always sticks out her tongue when she's happy so that's uh, a beautiful cat go take a look at Shotzi. She is on our Facebook page and website, and uh, we love her. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Shotzi eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Shotzi again at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag Save the Post Office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Uh, I want to do a point of privilege and just mention to our Patreon donors, Patreon has started charging sales tax uh, to donors who get merch in exchange for their Patreon donations. We don't give out merch to our Patreon donors. Uh, (laughs) We just use Patreon as an option for people that want to donate. Uh, so I've set that up so that you will not be charged sales tax. So if you get any emails from Patreon saying we're going to charge sales tax, when you go in, 